In 2018, a quiet project was underway at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory on the Pacific Coast. The seemingly crazy idea of flying a helicopter on Mars was being seriously discussed at engineering tables and tested through computer simulations. Because the goal wasn't just to attempt a flight, it was to achieve something that had never been done on any other planet. Nearly 184 million miles away, in an atmosphere a hundred times thinner than Earth's, a rotorcraft was expected to lift off the ground. In other words, it had to fly by pushing against air that was almost non-existent. That's why the project was named so meaningfully, Ingenuity. This small helicopter, part of the Mars 2020 mission, was transported to the Red Planet attached to the body of the Perseverance rover. Its mission was clear. If the system worked, it would become the first powered aircraft to take off on the surface of Mars. Just like the first flight made by the Wright brothers in 1903, except this time on another planet. The first flight succeeded exactly as planned. Ingenuity rose 10 feet above the Martian surface, hovered for 39 seconds, and then landed again. But that success also marked the beginning of a far more complex challenge. So how feasible is it really to fly on Mars? Theoretically, this would be like flying at an altitude of 100,000 feet on Earth. But the problem isn't just about altitude. Mars's atmosphere is only about 1% as dense as Earth's. That means a rotor must work a hundred times harder to generate lift. And as air density drops, conventional flight techniques simply stop working. Lift becomes almost non-existent and aerodynamic control nearly impossible. In essence, the laws of physics resist this kind of flight altogether. The second major challenge was weight. It wasn't enough for a helicopter to simply fly on Mars. It also had to be light enough to function in that environment, yet strong enough to survive the harsh conditions. To achieve this, Ingenuity's body was built using carbon fiber, ultralight metals, and highly insulated electronic components. But even the materials weren't enough to ensure lift. Its rotors had to be drastically oversized. Two counter-rotating blades, each about four feet in length, were designed to spin at 2,400 revolutions per minute. Without that speed, it would be impossible to interact meaningfully with the Martian air. But perhaps the most striking detail was this. The entire system had to operate fully autonomously without any human pilot. That's because the average signal delay between Mars and Earth is around 11 minutes. So by the time a command is sent and a response is received, at least 22 minutes will have passed. That means the aircraft had not only to fly, but to make its own real-time decisions in a matter of seconds. Despite all these challenges, NASA made an unexpected move. Instead of relying on traditional aerospace engineering, they chose a completely different path. And this is where the real madness begins. Because the flight computer developed for this mission wasn't built with high-end aerospace hardware, it was built with smartphone components. Ingenuity's brain ran on a Snapdragon 801 processor, the same chip used in the Samsung Galaxy S5 from 2015. Supporting systems included visual processors and navigation sensors originally found in the Google Pixel 3. This decision was nothing short of revolutionary in space technology. Until then, no planetary mission had ever used commercial smartphone parts directly in a flight system. This was the arrival of the COTS revolution, short for commercial off the shelf on the surface of Mars. Instead of relying on million-dollar specially engineered processors, NASA had chosen components you could find in everyday devices. But that approach came with serious risks. On the Martian surface, space radiation hits devices directly. Unlike Earth, Mars has no magnetic shield to block high-energy particles. So an ordinary smartphone chip could freeze, wipe its own memory, or crash entirely due to radiation exposure. But even that wasn't the biggest problem. For Ingenuity to truly succeed, it had to know exactly where it was on the Martian surface. The system needed to calculate its position in real time. And that's when they hit an unexpected wall. Because on Mars, there's no GPS. On Earth, positioning systems work by comparing signals from dozens of satellites. But since there's no such satellite network orbiting Mars, Ingenuity couldn't determine its location by receiving any signals from above. And to make matters worse, Mars's surface is almost symmetrical and full of repeating patterns, so visual recognition systems didn't yield reliable results either. That's why engineers came up with an unconventional solution. They equipped the system with a visual odometry module that worked just like an optical mouse. A downward-facing camera constantly scanned the ground, tracking shifts in rocks and shadows to calculate movement. 
Every millimeter of drift was digitized by the software and translated into three-dimensional position data. The system was lightweight, fast, and, at least in theory, it worked. But Mars doesn't care about theory, because this visual odometry system only worked when there was enough light and when the surface had distinct features. The camera would activate right after takeoff, looking straight down and snapping continuous images. Each frame was compared to the previous one, and the software analyzed how the rocks had shifted to determine speed and direction. But the system had a critical weakness. If the visual data stream stopped, the robot essentially went blind, and that fragile architecture began to show cracks for the first time on May 22, 2021, during the sixth flight. The flight plan was actually simple, a 215-meter round-trip maneuver followed by landing. But just 54 seconds after takeoff, an unexpected fault occurred in the flight software. The camera images stopped arriving in the correct sequence. The system that matched each frame with a timestamp could no longer tell when each image was taken. As a result, the robot's motion analysis completely broke down. The flight software detected inconsistencies in its position data. The instability grew, and suddenly the robot began to sway forward. Within seconds, it tilted by 20 degrees. As the motors tried to correct the sway, the system began to veer even more. This was a positive feedback loop, where the control system, instead of stabilizing the vehicle, actually amplified the error. For an airborne craft, that kind of loop is potentially fatal. Ingenuity reached that point in a matter of seconds. But it didn't crash. That's because the flight control software didn't rely solely on raw data, it analyzed trends. When the inconsistencies became too great, it triggered an emergency mode. The system aborted the flight plan and activated the safest landing protocol available. Despite the instability, Ingenuity managed to land safely, but this had been its first major test. So did Ingenuity's systems recover after this near crash? NASA engineers thoroughly investigated the cause of the drift. The issue was that the camera data was reaching the processor with a delay, but it wasn't just a timing error. Temperature fluctuations on the Martian surface were causing microsecond-level lags in the hardware components. That tiny delay had completely crippled the visual navigation system. The solution came in the form of a software patch. In the new update, an additional algorithm was added to help the system evaluate its position, even if the camera data arrived late. Ingenuity would no longer rely solely on timestamps. It would now also verify orientation. This way, even an older frame could still serve as a valid reference. The patch was installed, and the flight resumed. Flight 7, Flight 8, Flight 9, all completed successfully. But the system was gradually wearing down. Because on Mars, it wasn't just the algorithms being tested, it was the hardware too. The biggest threat remained the atmosphere itself. Since the Martian air is only about 1% as dense as Earth's, the rotors had to spin much faster each second just to generate lift. That stressed the motors, increased vibrations, and made every flight compound the structural fatigue. Still, ingenuity kept flying, dozens of times. Then the seasons on Mars began to shift. Temperatures dropped to as low as minus 121 degrees Fahrenheit. The nights had become deadly for the robot's batteries. To keep the hardware functioning, the battery temperature needed to stay above negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit but there was no natural protection on the Martian surface to make that possible. So the robot was forced to enter sleep mode every night. It would recharge using its solar panels in the morning, then gradually power up its systems one by one. But the extreme cold was weakening the battery cells, making each wake up harder than the last. Still, ingenuity kept working. 20 flights, 30, 40, each one more demanding, more complex, and with each mission, Ingenuity was transforming from a tech demo into a fully operational exploration vehicle. But Mars wasn't done yet. As if the cold, the fatigue, and the radiation weren't enough, a new threat emerged. Dust. Dust is one of the most persistent enemies on Mars. The fine particles drifting across the surface are too small to be seen with the naked eye. But these microscopic grains block sunlight, lower surface temperatures, and creep into electronic systems. Solar panels are especially vulnerable. Ingenuity relied entirely on its small panels for power, but each flight kicked up large amounts of dust due to the rotors spinning close to the ground, and that dust stuck directly to the panel surfaces. With every mission, the panels became slightly less efficient. An alert was triggered when energy output dropped by 18%. 
As power levels reached a critical threshold, the robot began partially shutting down certain systems. Survival had now become the top priority. Another issue emerged in the servo motors. Dust had worked its way between moving parts, causing microscopic friction. This created noticeable resistance, especially in the servos that adjusted the rotor angles. During some flights, the motors were seen overheating and drawing more power than usual. And yet, despite all these challenges, the robot kept flying. Until one morning, nothing happened. There was no signal, no routine system wake up. At the scheduled flight time, NASA's control center was met with silence. Satellite links were retried, signal pings were sent through the software, but the robot on Mars remained completely quiet. Hours passed, then days. For a total of 96 hours, there was no response. During that time, no one knew whether the robot was even still alive. Four days later, at 11.45 a.m., Mars local time, a faint transmission came through. The signal was weak, but it was clear. Ingenuity was still alive. However, the signal also revealed that something had permanently broken. Most notably, the inclinometer, the sensor that told the robot how tilted it was relative to the ground, had completely failed. This sensor was critical for flight stabilization during takeoff, but now it was no longer functioning. NASA engineers quickly found a workaround. The helicopter still had another functioning sensor, the inertial measurement unit. This unit was originally designed to measure the robot's acceleration and angular velocity. It wasn't meant to be a backup for tilt data, but with a software update, the IMU was reprogrammed to take over the inclinometer's job. This software update was transmitted directly to Mars, the updated flight software was restructured to operate using the new sensor data. In other words, Ingenuity had completely lost one of its sensors, but it could still fly using the remaining systems, and it did. Following this reawakening, several more test flights were successfully carried out. The helicopter was still capable of maneuvering, capturing photos, and even performing surface scans. However, this final phase also marked a period where the limits were being pushed, the batteries were still not operating at full capacity. The amount of dust on the panels kept increasing. With every flight, accumulation accelerated. And most importantly, the Martian winter was still ongoing. Eventually, the silence returned. Ingenuity was lost once again. On the Martian surface, a signal was received at the 96 hour of silence, but the batteries were still not reaching full charge. Dust on the solar panels had reduced their efficiency to just 18%. This allowed the system to operate only for limited durations. The energy was insufficient. However, the software had been optimized to take this shortfall into account. Flight paths were shortened, motor run times were reduced, and data collection intervals were adjusted. The robot was now moving with limited power and extreme caution. The new mission took place in a risky region. A previously unexplored area with a uniform ground texture had been chosen. This region was located along Perseverance's planned path. In other words, the helicopter would fly ahead of future missions, performing preliminary route scouting. And at 10.12 a.m., the flight began. Ingenuity ascended to an altitude of 39 feet. According to the planned route, it moved about 656 feet east. The camera systems began scanning pre-selected targets. Images were captured, data was compressed, and queued for transmission. Then the landing command was issued. The robot began its descent, However, the ground offered insufficient reference points for the navigation system. The visual algorithm may have confused this region with the previous one. This led to a loss of orientation within the software and caused a delayed response in the stabilization system. The landing was completed, but there was a problem. Post-flight data showed that one of the servo motors was unresponsive. One of the stabilizing arms in the rotor system had gotten stuck. Analysis revealed that this jamming occurred due to a mechanical impact. In other words, the robot had hit the ground, a light but critical collision. Final signals from the surface indicated that the helicopter was still operational, but its flight system had been deactivated. This marked the end of an era. The first aircraft to successfully fly on Mars had completed its flight mission. But the helicopter was still alive, and it could continue supporting other surface missions. The batteries were still charging, the solar panel was still receiving sunlight, and the onboard sensors were still transmitting data on temperature, pressure, and atmospheric conditions. In other words, it had become a stationary instrument on the Martian surface. Its mission wasn't over, it had simply changed form. 
In 1903, on the shores of Kitty Hawk, the Wright brothers stayed in the air for just 12 seconds. But those 12 seconds changed humanity's relationship with the sky forever. From that day on, flight wasn't just possible, it became a symbol of inevitable progress. Now, nearly 120 years later, a similar beginning has taken place on another planet. Ingenuity was the first machine to flap its wings on the surface of Mars. From its first flight to its final impact, it remained an entirely experimental platform. When it was designed, it was only expected to last 30 days and complete no more than five flights. But in the end, it flew 72 times. It stayed airborne on Mars for a total of 128 minutes. It covered over 10.5 miles. In other words, a system planned for 30 days carried out its mission for 1,004 days. Every vibration, every shift in temperature, every deviation in orientation was recorded. All the data collected during that time now forms the core data set for future aerial vehicles. So Ingenuity's fall was not a failure. It was the moment the limits of a new technology were defined. What's more, those limits are no longer confined to Mars. The experience gained from Ingenuity is now being used to develop autonomous aerial vehicles for upcoming lunar missions. NASA and other agencies no longer treat the concept of aerial robots as science fiction. It's now an engineering discipline. The second generation of helicopters following Ingenuity is being designed for far more advanced tasks. The goal is no longer just to fly, but to collect samples, map terrain, and even support other spacecraft on Mars. NASA's Dragonfly mission will use a rotorcraft to explore Titan's atmosphere. ESA and JAXA are developing probes that can fly in extreme environments like Venus. Someday, perhaps, a spaceport will be built on the Martian surface. Aircraft landing and taking off for crewed missions, miniature drones assisting in data collection, autonomous helicopters transporting cargo. So this small helicopter, lying quietly in the middle of a desert, was the beginning of a new era.